Hello and good afternoon, good morning and good evening. Uh, welcome to this collaborative session between the B Corp movement and Regeneration 2030. We're excited to present this session as the fourth installment of B Lab's ongoing Interdependence Unpacked series. My name is Nathan Gilbert. I'm the executive director of B Lab Europe and I will be your host today. We have a really exciting conversation for you entitled Multinationals in the B Corp Movement, a transformative and collaborative journey to redefine success in business. We are here with Martha Tracy, project lead for Givaudan's Purpose, Anne-Sophie Gourjon, Sustainable Development Manager at Bonduel, Hugo Di Francesco, CEO of Chiesi, and Alexandra Heaven, Global Sustainability and B Corp Manager at Danone. Now, before I go to our speakers, there's some of you out there that might be new to the B Corp movement. So I'd like to give a quick overview and framing for today's conversation. And hopefully many of you were also able to join the plenary panel on the B Corp model that was just a few hours ago. The B Corp movement is an ever-growing community of companies committed to using business as a force for good. Certified B Corps must complete a rigorous evaluation of companies' social and environmental performance and embed stakeholder governance into the legal DNA. B Corporations are companies that put into practice those words we just saw in the Declaration of Interdependence. There are now over 3,500 certified B Corps globally across 65 different countries, among 150 different industries, all with a common goal to build a more inclusive, equitable, and regenerative economy. With the vision to transform our global economy, this movement requires the engagement of all companies, small and large. In the beginning, the B Corp movement started attracting small and mid-sized companies, private enterprises. In the first five years since B Lab launched B Corp certification, its growth and energy was driven by these sized companies. However, to reach our intended objective, we had to find a way to engage with large multinationals and stock listed companies. In the last five to eight years, we've seen more and more multinationals get involved. Some of these companies are subsidiaries of larger public companies, such as Ben & Jerry's, which first certified in 2012. And if you jump to today, Unilever, its owner, has since acquired seven more B Corps as it continues to develop its sustainable living portfolio. Other major multinationals, including Nestle, Campbell's Soup, Coca-Cola, and the Gap have either acquired B Corps or supported their subsidiaries to pursue B Corp certification, seeing their impact as relevant as their financial potential. We've seen the certification of stock listed companies such as Laureate Education and Natura, which later acquired the Body Shop, as well as the public stock offerings of B Corps Lemonade and Ola Luce. And we have seen global multinationals such as Danone commit to certifying its entire business. And since commencing their B Corp journey, they have certified over two dozen subsidiaries representing 45% of their total turnover. And they intend to reach group certification by 2025. Now I know Chiesi is up there as well, but I'll leave their story for Ugo. So all these milestones are to say that large and public companies are increasingly taking leadership to address our compounding crises and moving their uh, business to benefit all stakeholders. It is with these large companies that we'll have a significant opportunity to shift the course of business to create systems change and impact. And this shift is not just occurring within the B Corp movement. Just over a year ago, we saw 200 CEOs of major stock listed companies as part of the business roundtable show their support for stakeholder capitalism. Having solutions and a community to offer, the B Corp movement responded to this announcement with a call, uh, with our own call to action. Let's get to work an invitation for business, the business roundtable companies and other companies to put these words into practice. One example of a company walking the walk and taking a credible step towards embedding stakeholder principles into their business was Danone's recent adoption of the new legal structure in France, Société à Mission, where the mission of the company became embedded into its governance and legal framework. And so while the B Corp movement is accelerating the foundations for a more inclusive, equitable and regenerative economy, we are encouraged by the engagement of the really large multinational corporations that see their role in this movement and simultaneously seek the support and collaboration of this community to realize the transformation required to get there. But we also know that this transformation takes time. And for really large corporations, this can be a significant undertaking. Just last month, B Lab publicly launched a new initiative to provide meaningful support and engagement for those multinationals that are on this journey. This program is called the B Movement Builders, a blueprint for business transformation centered around impact, credibility, and collaboration. 
It also provides a streamlined path for companies who aspire to become certified. And this program was launched recognizing the importance of the transformation journey in and of itself, not just the end goal of certification. So here are our program's uh, founding companies, and we're thrilled to have Givaudan, Bonduel, and Danone as a mentor in the program with us today to share, us, uh, share with us more about their experiences. Combined, these six companies represent over $60 billion in turnover, over 250,000 employees. They're present in over 120 different countries and have the potential to influence the five industries that they re represent, cosmetics, flavors and fragrances, food and beverage, retail, and steel. And we are thrilled to have the opportunity to share their stories with you today. So as the B Corp movement goes big, our sights are set on the next decade, a decade of action, collaboration, transformation, and impact. And so thank you for the opportunity to open up this conversation. I'd like to now turn toward our speakers. And first, I'd like to invite uh, Ugo Di Francesco, the CEO of Chiesi Pharmaceuticals, to speak. So Ugo, while you're not involved with the Bee Movement Builder program, Chiesi is quite a pioneer in the Bee Movement, uh, having already completed the certification of your global business. I'd like you to introduce yourself and the company and share with us what you feel has been a unique experience uh, for you and the company in your B Corp journey. Okay, thanks. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Ugo Di Francesco, I'm the group CEO of Chiesi Pharmaceutical, and Chiesi is a mid-sized global pharmaceutical group uh, with uh, uh, R&D driven, so with investments on research and development, which are beyond the 20% of our turnover. And uh, we are operating uh, with direct presence in almost 30 countries around the world and with uh, partners uh, uh, all, around, uh, all around the globe. And uh, as you said, we have been uh, the first uh, pharmaceutical company of our size, international group, uh, to become a B Corp certified in the world. Uh, having said that, I don't know if it is uh, something which is unique only for us. Definitely there are uh, a few elements which I may be, uh, to me is worth to share with the audience. One is uh, the point that the DNA of a pharma company is uh, to prolong and to save lives. And uh, it makes to some extent, uh, let's say, a physiological process to have a, to have a natura natural attention to concepts like uh, attention to other, attention to patients, the community and the environment. Um, another element which I believe was relevant for us is the fact that despite we are uh, an international group and we are located in all around the world, the fact to be located in a territory like Parma, the place where uh, the regeneration 2030 is, uh, 2020-2030 is happening today, is to some extent uh, uh, another, played another important role because a company of our size in a city like Parma assumes also an important role toward the social and economic tissue of the society. Uh, the second point is uh, uh, the fact that the, the B Corp certification is not just, uh, let's say, a goal. It's been uh, real uh, uh, and truly a global and collective achievement. Uh, and uh, we were able, uh, doing it, we involved all our people around the world. And uh, our goal since the beginning was to be certified as a global group and not just as a single affiliate. And basically to do it, we identified areas of evolution in the whole company and through them we established best practices that then we will uh, we had spread across our uh, across our affiliates and to do it it took uh, one whole year uh, was dedic was defined was dedicated to define actions for corporate and local uh, improvement and we involved uh, uh, hundreds of people uh, in uh, in our country teams uh, last and uh, but not least, you mentioned it uh, before uh, during uh, your introduction about Danone. Uh, for us, uh, uh, and it is something which maybe it is relevant for any uh, important transformative project that a company can run, and it is the commitment of the top. In our case, uh, this commitment of the top was even reinforced by the top by the fact that you know in uh, the top of the company is also represented by the, the shareholders of the group. And uh, to do it, in the first of all, uh, the first actions we took, uh, the first action we took was in December 2018, and we changed our legal structure of the company. So we changed our structure and the bylaws, adopting uh, the legal status of public benefit corporation 
which is basically was introduced in Italy with a law in 2015. And Italy, together with the United States, with USA, has been the first, uh, the two, the first two countries in the world to adopt uh, this new legal status. And uh, this is not just a change in our legal framework. This is really a transformation which uh, uh, revolutionize our way of being a company. Uh, uh, and this is what, pretty simple because it is legally required today as a benefit corporation to consider the impact of our decision on our people, on our workers, of course, but also on supplier, on the community and the environment. So balancing the purpose of profit between the profit to generate profit, that of course remains as our, our main goal, but with a view to create value for, uh, as we said before, for suppliers, for the community and the environment. And for us, if we go back to the first point, you know, in a pharmaceutical company, it's part of our DNA uh, to uh, pay attention to patients, but also to the community and the environment. And uh, basically it was something which was uh, really felt since the beginning as really part of our, uh, part of, of our, uh, of the spirit of our group. Within our uh, new by bylaws, which have been of course the consequence of the new legal status, uh, we decided and we to incorporate four main purposes of public and general benefit. First of all, it was the commitment to constant innovation for the sustainability of all corporate processes and practices. Of course, when we talk about innovation, everybody uh, referring to a pharmaceutical company thinks that innovation is mainly related to discover new products, to discover new pharmaceutical treatment, maybe to cure uh, diseases, but it is not only. Innovation was also related to the concept to, to uh, generate constant innovation also in a sustainable way in all our corporate processes and practices, not just uh, discovering and developing new pharmaceutical products. The second uh, commitment uh, in our bylaw is to create a positive impact on people and patients uh, with the goal of improving, their, uh, of course, the health, but also the well-being and the quality of life. Uh, the third element uh, co commitment taken has been to give the, uh, a, a clear and real contribution to the development of our local communities and by local communities, we don't mean just Parma, where we are based as an headquarter, but in every communities where we operate all around the world. And then, finally, uh, the, the, pro the commitment to promote a conscious and sustainable way of doing business. Uh, all of it to say that you know uh, the concept like shared value and double purchases were always, uh, uh, to some extent, uh, part. Uh, 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 and embedded in ourselves, in our way of doing beer, doing business and doing work and work to work, but also uh, in our attitude and behaviors during our lives as citizens. Uh, being a big corp, and here by experience, uh, having been certified almost uh, almost two years ago, is something which requires a change in the culture and in the mindset of all our people. And uh, uh, the point is to do it, uh, we have, and all together, we have to make it visible and framed within a global goal to achieve and uh, to complement everything at 360, at 360 degrees. Uh, and, uh, for example, to do it, uh, um, we, uh, is a journey. And within the, the point we said before, you know, to make visible and framed with some goals, we also declared uh, officially the goal uh, that we want to become a company carbon neutrality, so a carbon, completely carbon footprint neutral by 2035. And this is a clear goal which is now known and it is definitely uh, measured with uh, targets to achieve every single year and every single employee within our 600, 6,500 people which are part of our big families uh, knows it and we uh, uh, refer uh, regularly to our people about where we are with achievement of this of this goal. Final, uh, and to me, let me uh, stress uh, this point and uh, to highlight what it was uh, extremely uh, positive for me when uh, basically something which was uh, uh, shocking to some extent has been the enthusiasm and the, uh, let's say, the proactivity of all our people around the globe that we announced our goal to become a B Corp, to become, a, a, to, to obtain the certification of a B Corp. You know, the reaction was uh, extremely 
understanding also from an emotional point of view. And basically, as I said before, it was something which acted as a booster for all of us in, in achieving this goal. And uh, I'll, I'll end this, uh, let's say, eight minutes talk with, uh, again, also another sentence, uh, where uh, to me was uh, another proof. And if I have to tell you what have been the people most uh, proactive and also pushing all of us in, toward this goal have been the youngest generations. And uh, I believe that we have a lot to learn from them in relation uh, to this topic. Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you very much for sharing your journey with us. Um, I'd like to now turn to Anne-Sophie Gourjean from Bonduel. And so Anne-Sophie, Bonduel is not certified yet at the moment, uh, but it's been investigating, committing itself to the journey for a few years now. And so Bonduel is now part of the B Movement Builder program and engages closely with this movement and with some of the companies here on this call. Can you share with us what have been some of the biggest hurdles for Bonduel to overcome in pursuing this path? And, and what do you feel are the more challenging next steps for the company to take? Mm. Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to be with you today. So um, for, for those who don't know Bonduel, just a quick word. Uh, Bonduel is a plant-based food manufacturer that was created in uh, uh, 1853 in France. And it's a family-run business with strong social values and a particular connection to the land and to the, the, part, the, the, farm, the farmers we partner with. And um, our social and environmental uh, commitments have been uh, growing and growing until two years ago when our chairman decided to become a big up certified company by 2025 for the whole group. And it has also been reaffirmed this year with Bondel being one of the founding members of the Big Women Builders. And so to answer your question, Nathan, on the on the the, the biggest hurdle for for Bonduel, I think um, the the first challenge that uh, we faced is for people internally to understand what 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 B Corp is. If you are not a sustainability specialist, uh, I'm used to saying that it's like learning a second language, so it takes time. And also because it's a company commitment, it is essential that the action plans and what it requires in terms of transformation transpires and is integrated into the job functions. Um, in, in my opinion, it's, it is what distinguishes a company that is performant in terms of CSR and a B Corp. Uh, I think in a, in a B Corp, sustainable development is integrated everywhere and, uh, and in the business model itself. And maybe when you, you become a B Corp, you don't need a CSR department anymore. Um, and, and the second challenge um, is that, uh, and it's linked to the first one, is that uh, even if you are a CSR champion, and uh, at least you, you thought you were, one, once you evaluate yourself with the B Impact Assessment, the B Corp questionnaire, it's like a, a reality check. And for, for Bonvel, we discovered that we still had a few steps to work in our uh, B journey. Uh, for example, in, in Bonvel, the majority of our sites are engaged in local community projects. And, um, and however, it's, it's not fully coordinated through uh, global policy or measured properly. So it cannot really be credited in the B impact assessment. And, um, and uh, the bid journey can be uh, somehow destabilizing because it pushes uh, companies to question processes that have been in place for a long time and, uh, and, and need to be improved. But I think it's, re it's, it, it's really something that helps the companies at the end uh, improve and, and be more, more structured and, and efficient at the end. Um, and um, and so I think that the, the the challenge for a company of our side of our size is the, the size itself. Um, most of the B corps are small and and agile, and sometimes innovative in terms of governance. Um, because usually the B corps created the, the 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 difference they wanted to make in the world, and then they made they built the built the business case for it. And for us, it's different. We are a regular company, uh, traditional, that wants to embrace change and become a purpose-driven company. And we know it will require time and, and effort and, and endurance. And um, and so, yes, it, it, it's, a, it's a long journey. So, Anzovi, I mean, this is very much a, a journey of transformation for Bonduel, as you're saying. I'm, I'm wondering, can you share with us what are the areas of impact that you feel Bonduel sees itself really leaning into now and in the future? 
it's it's a great great question you ask here, and this is exactly um, what we have bis been discussing internally and in the in the past few uh, weeks and months. Um, because after completing the impact assessment, um, Bondwell could actually see the different areas of improvement and possibilities. And uh, well, there are many because if if you want to get to uh, 200 points, of course, you, you can do uh, many things and improve many in many ways. And um, this is where we started asking ourselves uh, where, where, um, in, in what areas uh, Bondwell could really um, excel and go above and beyond. And you have some topics that you choose, either you are performant in terms of CSR, and it's good already, and there are other topics where it, it really makes sense. And this is why we started the discussion on, on what was our purpose or our mission. Um, we already had a purpose that was formulated in 2012, um, but it was good to see how this purpose would resonate today because Sustainable development uh, has evolved, uh, and and uh, and a lot of things have moved in eight years. So, reflecting on the purpose was um, asking the, the 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 different the following questions: uh, What is Bondwell good at? What is Bondwell paid for? What do we love? And uh, and and what what does the world need? And asking those is uh, very interesting because you get feedback also internally, and you, if you have a chance to share with external stakeholders, it it, it might also help you in in, in this uh, reflection. And the the, the different consensus uh, we had on is actually something that we knew already, but that was only reinforced is that Bondwell has a role to play in inspiring the trans the transition towards plant based diets because we are convinced that the preservation of our ecosystem and environment will happen only by changing what we eat, what, what we eat and also, of course, the way we produce our food. Uh, we, we believe that feeding people sustainably has become a major challenge, and uh, the food system is at the heart of major issues of the, that the, this century is facing, with the growing demand for food together with the, the population growth. And, um, and so uh, if we ask ourselves, how can we go above and, and, uh, and above the, 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 the company's uh, borders, what, what difference can we make? And um, well, as you, as you know, one third of the GHG emissions are linked to the food system from farm to fork. And the majority of those are linked to animal feed or, or livestock. Deforestation, for example, and the loss of natural habitats is also linked with the, the land use uh, conversion for, for beef and soy, for example, and so on. So at Bonnell, we are really convinced that uh, we have a role to play that goes beyond the pure production of, of goods and that we could, for example, address consumer behavior by also understanding the root causes and maybe provide, for example, education to the consumption of a more healthy plant-based diets and, uh, and, and also understanding, for example, the barrier that are preventing people from adopting a healthy and, and sustainable diet. And also because, um, well, also the, this plant-based food uh, evolution needs to be made together with uh, the way we produce our food. And this is something that is very important for Bonvel. Uh, we've been improving the way we, we, uh, we, we partner with the farmers, helping them in the agricultural practices that they have, etc. And we, 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 we still can evolve and, and through innovation, find a better way to, to preserve the, our planet. Uh, and, uh, and, and I'm sure the food system is, it can be a, a very good leverage for this. Anne-Sophie, thank you so much for sharing and uh, look forward to working with you as we continue this journey together. Uh, I'd like to move on to another Bee Movement Builder company, Givaudan. Um, so Martha, not only has Givaudan joined the Bee Movement Builder program, it has also publicly announced its ambition to certify as a B Corp. So congratulations, by the way. Um, beyond taking these steps to be more involved with this movement, Givaudan has been on its own journey to establish an embed purpose across the business. So can you share with us how this journey has been defined and shaped and what are the more meaningful aspects that this brings to the company in your view? Thank you, Nathan, and it's great to be here today. And I think listening to Ugo and, uh, and Sophie, I'm also going to reflect some of the themes they've already mentioned. So just to start a few words about Givadon, as although it's a company whose products are enjoyed by everyone every day, it's relatively unknown. 
So we're a Swiss-based taste, well-being, fragrance and beauty company. And put simply, that means we contribute fragrances, flavours and other active ingredients to many well-known consumer brands that all of us use every day. And we're a truly global organisation. We have around 16,000 employees in over 180 locations. And being purpose-led has been at the heart of the company since the founders were harvesting lavender in southern France over 250 years ago. But in the last years, we've realised that we want to go even further. And so the role that I am playing is to help to lead Givaudan's journey to bring purpose back to the organisation through three phases. Uh, one, rediscovery, two, embedding, and three, activation. And I'd like to share a little bit more about our journey so far. Uh, so firstly, on rediscovery, uh, the objective of this phase has been to develop our, acting, uh, our guiding star. So to set the future direction for the organization and to do it in a way that's right for people, for planet and for business performance. And the process that we took to do this was incredibly inclusive. We involved over 500 people from within the organization but also customers, suppliers, and other partners. And we took those insights along with other key inputs, such as the sustainable development goals, and ultimately captured the, the purpose or the why Givadon exists through the phase of creating for happier, healthier lives with love for nature. And this has two elements to it. It has the, the cementing of our role in society, the contribution that we have to our customers' products, which deliver on happiness and health, as well as reinforcing our commitment as an organization to put nature first in everything we do. We do also have a second part um, of our purpose, which is a call to action. It's a let, the let's imagine together. And this is built on our reflection that these are big ambitions. The perp we cannot deliver on the purpose alone. And it also reflects the, the more partnership model of our business as well. So we have the statement, but we all know the mantra that you can only manage what you measure. Um, so we also wanted to set some measurable goals, which provide a clear focus for us over the next years as we adapt to this new business direction. And these are organized under clear areas of creations, people, nature and communities. And under there, we have more specific targets related to greenhouse gas emissions and other, other critical elements. So when we launched our purpose statement, the goals, um, it was clear from the reception that this was the right evolution for us. Um, co colleagues automatically resonated with it, and it's been very much welcomed by our customers and other partners as being a natural part of Givadon. So that was the rediscovery phase. Um, and over the last 12 months, we've been in um, what we've called the, the phase of embedding. And we really didn't want our purpose to just be a statement on posters. So in those last 12 months, we've been focusing on bringing the purpose to life. But of course, the last eight months haven't at all been the year that we would have expected. Um, but actually, if, if there is a silver lining to COVID, I think it has given us an opportunity to live up to our purpose in more ways than we would have initially thought of. Um, and I'd like to give you a couple of examples. So um, we have a goal area of people. And as with all organisations, the critical priority over the last eight months has been in keeping our employees safe. Um, but of course, it, with the changing situation, we know everyone is experiencing this crisis differently. And this situation has given us the courage and the impetus to start focusing so much more on mental health and caring for the mental health of all of our teams. If I take another area of creations, um, the situation has demonstrated that our need to keep our manufacturing, our supply lines open um, to, to contribute to critical products in sanitation, in hygiene and in food supply chains. So reinforcing how we contribute to happier, healthier lives in society. So hopefully some of these examples demonstrate being purpose led is a lot more than our measurable targets and a lot more than a, the purpose statement on a piece of paper. And another example of our desire to turn this from paper into more action was setting out our ambition to become a B Corp. Um, um, and very much we've seen this ambition and our desire to move so, so boldly in this direction 
um, has been to reinforce our conviction and our, and our commitments both internally and externally to be a force for good. And then joining the B movement builders is yet again a, a part of our broader intent to be a role model, to inspire and collaborate with, with all the great companies that are here today as well, to be a more responsible business for us and for other companies. So the, the final big step that we've taken this year to embed our purpose has been the launch of our 2025 strategy. And purpose as a North Star um, and being embedded throughout the decisions, the strategic direction of the company has been clear in the recent articulation of our five-year plan. And this is also demonstrated through the introduction of some non-financial ambitions to go alongside our financial ones changing the, the focus or reinforcing the focus um, over the next five years. So I think through all those events and actions of, of the embedding phase this year, we've seen that balancing people, planet and profit are critical for us to be a successful, sustainable business. But we really are just at the start. Um, so we're now moving into a phase that we'll call the third phase, which we're calling activation. And so while the engagement from the organization has been significant, we still have such a long way to go to get purpose and being purpose led into the heads, hearts and hands of our 16,000 colleagues. We've got lots of people asking questions, wanting to get involved, wanting to see change and colleagues at all levels suggesting and starting to implement different solutions. But of course, the traditional corporate model of doing things top down does not necessarily allow all of this energy, enthusiasm and ideas to come to life. So we're currently grappling with questions about how do we bring our call to action of let's imagine together to life? How do we really enable it to happen and to move purpose into 16,000 people's day to day? And do we need to shift to a perhaps more entrepreneurial culture where we find more ways to bring humanity, simplicity, innovation into the way we do things, and ultimately activating purpose in a way that better serves our customers, while also increasing employee engagement, accountability, and empowerment. So we're really just embarking on how we animate these next few steps, but being part of this community, the wider B Corp community, and participating in forums such as these are great assets and inspiration areas as we find our way. And really what's more, we hope that we are able to inspire other multinationals by our journey and to, to inspire them to follow similar routes to be the change that we all want and need to see in the world. So just to sum up the, the three phases that we've been through was one rediscovery using an inclusive process which was authentic to us because we believe that will make it stand the test of time. Two, finding ways to embed the purpose mantra of people, planet and profit across everything we do, because we see that that helps us to manage risk and uncertainty in a much stronger way. And three, activating purpose through all our communities, because by enabling us to use purpose, we can create more strategic levers for innovation, for growth, for engagement and for partnerships. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Martha. Thank you. Uh, it's it's evident by your story of uh, Givaudan's purpose and how that connects to the B Corp uh, journey that you're now embarking on, as well as the uh, what we heard from Anne Sophie and Hugo that for these size companies, embracing the B Corp journey uh, as well as a more just purpose led journey is really one that's going to take time, and there's many different elements to it. Uh, so thank you for sharing how uh, Jibodan has approached this. I'd like to now turn to Alex Heaven, who's the B Corp manager at Danone, to share her perspective with you. So Danone has been on this journey uh, on certification for quite some time, now over five years. It's certified 25 subsidiaries. That represents 45% of the business in terms of turnover. It's now a B movement builder uh, participant as a mentor to support other multinationals that are on this journey, as we've just heard. And so, Alex, you, you personally have been involved with this effort for, I believe, nearly that whole timeline. So um, what is, in your view, the biggest success and the biggest challenge to date that Danone's faced in supporting this, this transformational process? Thanks, Nathan, and hi, everyone. Um, thanks for having me as part of the session. So, yes, as you said, we've, we've been on the B Corp journey for about five years. Danone, um, as, a, as a quick introduction, is a global food and beverage company uh, present in over 100 company, uh, countries 
and across three different sectors. So uh, dairy and plant-based products, uh, beverages and waters and uh, specialized nutrition, which is really focusing on early life and medical nutrition. And, and yes, we have, uh, I think, early, late 2015, early 2016 is when we started our B Corp journey. And, and I've been um, working in the B Corp team since early 2016, so the whole way through. And I think that uh, Danone really embarked on this journey back then for, for a few different reasons. I think, first of all, we have always in Danone had this idea of dual purpose of social and economic progress. Uh, and, and this idea of interdependence was really growing um, in our food system and in, inside the business. And we recognized that the food system was being challenged uh, from outside and, and completely rightfully so. We, we recognized those challenges were really valid and we wanted to work on them as well. So I think alongside this dual purpose uh, that we had, B Corp was a way for us to check and manage our strategy towards creating stakeholder value in an interdependent system that, that, that the food system is. Uh, and importantly, it was also a way for us to prove that it can be done by multinationals. I think there was a lot of mistrust of multinationals and their, their sustainability effort. But it's absolutely essential that multinationals are part of the change, um, as Martha said, that, that we want and need to see in the world. So multinationals can genuinely aim and work towards creating positive impact. And we wanted to be a sustainable business and be uh, prove to other multinationals uh, that this can be part of your business model and that that sustainable business for multinationals can be mainstream. So in terms of uh, some of the successes that we've seen over the past five years, one of those is absolutely the interest from other large companies. Uh, we have had over, right since the beginning of, of our journey, we have had a lot of uh, other large companies, our suppliers, our partners, our peers, getting in touch with us and asking, um, is it possible? How is it possible? How do we do this? And, and being really interested. Um, and of course, we've got the launch of the, the B Movement Builders this year. Uh, and so I think that there's a real turning point in stakeholder-oriented business models for large companies. And that's been something that's very encouraging for us. Um, and, and a huge reason that we're in this. And I, I think even though we have been working really closely with you at, at B-Lab and some of those other companies to build what it looks like for multinationals and how it can be possible and, and getting that right balance between challenging us and, and working with multinationals to be able to be certified, there is, um, it's great to see these other companies coming on board so we can work in, in a bigger community uh, to drive that change and, and increase even further and encourage other, other businesses to be on, to, to get on board. So that's definitely a, a really big success and something I'm, I'm very happy to see. Another thing that I would say is maybe more of a delight because, in fact, it wasn't something we specifically worked on, but it's something that we saw right from the beginning, is that the commitment and dedication from people across uh, all of the companies that we work in, all of the countries, um, of people to push for this goal. So as soon as people understood what B Corp was, or a couple of people understood what B Corp was, they were really uh, passionate about the model that B Corp represents. So we had people in Indonesia, in Egypt, in Senegal, Bangladesh, China, who were proactively reaching out to us in the corporate team and asking to lead their own um, B Corp uh, certification journey despite there being a really tiny movement in those countries. Um, so I think that this uh, is proof of the success that B-Lab has had in creating the B Corp movement in general and creating a solution that really resonates. It resonates as uh, we face one of the largest problems um, across society at the moment, which is that the structure of the economy being focused on value creation for shareholders rather than balancing that for everyone. And B Corp is really representing a way to, to move past that to a more positive business model uh, that is more stake, stakeholder oriented. And the fact that we have people in all of these countries who quickly get on board with that idea and are passionate and dedicated towards uh, turning their businesses inside Danone into a B Corp, I think really um, shows that we are on the right path and this is the right model that we've been, that, we've, that we are pursuing. 
however, on the other side, of course, there are uh, there are some challenges. So even though that a couple of minutes ago I said that we are proving this can be done uh, by big business, I, I will say that it hasn't been it hasn't been a breeze. There are there are some challenges. One of the big challenges for us at Danone is is on the data collection side. We have a lot of different reporting streams. Um, we've got lots of HR reporting, carbon reporting, uh, of course, all the all the topics to do with our products. So what we really needed to focus on is how we can make B Corp live inside each of our subsidiaries um, while not being an extra burden in terms of reporting. So we're trying uh, really hard to make sure that the reporting for B Corp is, in, is efficient and embedded uh, in our current re reporting streams, but still allowing each of those subsidiaries to recognize uh, and learn more about the kind of company that they are, because that's one of the huge benefits we see for our subsidiaries to become B Corps, is that they get to know their business in a really comprehensive way that they wouldn't have otherwise. So that balance is um, something that we will continue to work on. And then, of course, I think um, there's also the, uh, the issue of awareness. Um, and, and so if you mentioned this before, it, if you aren't a sustainability professional or somebody who's interested in this, it can be hard to understand. And while we are becoming a B Corp at, at the global level as a, as a whole company, because we believe in this as a model of business overall, um, we also know that consumers are struggling to choose the right products. And there's, I struggle to choose the right products and to know what I should be looking for when I, when I need to buy something. And we recognize that B Corp can help to answer some of those, those questions for consumers. And we would love for people to be able to know that and be able to recognize that B Corp is, is a label that they can trust and it can help them to make those right choices. Because the, the more they're choosing um, the, the positive choice in terms of what they're buying, uh, the, the better impact we're going to have and the, the greater the scale of the impact that um, the B Corp community can have. And so that's something that we, we see is really important to increase the, the scale of our positive impact as a community. Um, and it's something that we want to work on and continue working on with the B Corp community to build. Thanks so much, Alex, uh, for, for sharing more about your journey. Um, what strikes me is clearly an opportunity to work amongst ourselves and collaborate much more. I mean, we have the B Movement Builder program, which is a clear opportunity to connect multinationals, support one another in the journey. But as you talk about the uh, the external opportunity to elevate the awareness around uh, the B Corp movement, the certification, what it means, how that can influence consumers in making their purchasing decisions, uh, the opportunity that all of us um, can take together to work toward that goal. I want to bring in one more question as we start to wind down this conversation. Uh, so before we let you guys go, um, you know, I, I would have to, I want to address the, the challenging year that we've all faced uh, here in 2020. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has really upended business all over the world and has made our working lives very often unpredictable. Uh, Martha, you talked a little bit about what Gibraltar has done to address the pandemic, but uh, I wanted to ask all of you to share maybe in a few minutes uh, what you're most proud of and how your company has responded to this crisis. Uh, or what do you see as the biggest opportunity for the business in order to better respond? And perhaps uh, we'll go back around in the same order. Ugo, I'd love to turn to you and, and then on Sophie and then on. No, it's not an easy question to answer in a few minutes, uh, talking about um, how was our reactions and what we have been addressing the, um, the COVID emergency. But let's say, maybe let's try to do it. Uh, what our, let's say our answer was uh, going back also to the principles which are driving the the B Corp movement have been to give an answer uh, among three main directions. One are the patients, of course. The second one has been the people, and the third one has been the environment and the society. Uh, among the patients, uh, uh, you know, our first uh, and clear goal has been always to assure uh, the presence uh, and the availability of our treatments to every single patient all around the world. And uh, as you can imagine, it meant huge efforts in terms of production, in terms of sourcing of active ingredients and excipients around the world. And uh, also, if you related it, if you relate it to the point that we are a company which has a focus in respiratory, 
as you can imagine, the level of pressure we were facing at the beginning when uh, basically facing a, a, a virus uh, which is affecting mainly the, the respiratory area. So this was uh, the first time, and I have to say I'm really proud, and I will never stop to thank all our people in, uh, in our company in uh, what they have done, because I can assure that and not a single patient in uh, all around the world ever faced uh, an issue in finding uh, the availability of, our, of one of our treatment. The second point was, as we said before, was to protect uh, our people uh, and the people. And uh, uh, to do it, we put in place, as uh, I'm sure uh, every company around the world, a number of actions in order to, uh, to protect, uh, to assure the social distancing, to introduce smart working, uh, to uh, define uh, occupancy rates uh, in our spaces, and also to assure the protection. And the, uh, but another point that we did was, uh, for example, we are providing a serological test to every single employee, of course, uh, uh, has to be uh, on a voluntary base because of the data protection legislation legislations in place. But uh, we, can, we uh, give it for free and we provide it to every single uh, employee within, uh, within Chiesi and we do it on a regular base, not only once. Every two or three weeks, they can retest and to have... Uh, uh, to have a serological uh, analysis. And then, uh, in any case, we found a positive uh, test. We have also an agreement with the university where we provide immediately, not only for the employee, but also for the family, and again, completely free, also the swab, with an answer which has been delivered, which can be delivered in less than one day. In five, six hours, there is also uh, the result of it. So the second point was, as I said before, so to assure the patients, the second to protect our people in any way, even uh, not stopping our activities at all. And finally, uh, what we tried and what we have been doing for the society and the communities. Uh, we have uh, give contributions in many ways to all more than 330 hospitals uh, all around the world. Uh, we gave uh, also help and uh, contribution to almost 400 institutions, including associations, universities, charities, uh, and so on. And we were providing we provided more than 400,000. Uh, protection uh, devices uh, and so on to everybody who was requiring uh, uh, requiring our help. And uh, on top of that, on total, we gave also uh, a level of donations of uh, m more than 9 million, 9 million euros. And uh, this is not something which has been done uh, only here in Italy, as I said before. And uh, again, I'm really proud of it, of all our people, because uh, this is uh, an effort which has been done all around the affiliates, all around the world, and in, in all the places where we have, where we have located. Well, wow, thank you very much, Hugo, for sharing. Uh, Anne-Sophie, the, the same question to you. Yes, and, uh, and it's impressive with what Kezi has just uh, mentioned and shared. We are not that related to uh, to 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 has like a pharmaceutical group, but uh, what really made us proud is the, the commitment and solidarity that uh, all of our workers um, had. So we don't we don't we don't have a, a food crisis also in, in addition to the the health crisis. Uh, of people who continue to work in factories, they help each other when 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 uh, one team would be too, uh, too overwhelmed. For example, the food service uh, team uh, uh, brought support to the to those in retail, and uh, also a lot of our sites make donation to help local communities, local population who have found themselves in uh, in situation of food insecurity. So, um, yes, I think it was a perfect demonstration of how we are all uh, interconnected and interdependent. And uh, well, that's the, the good side of, of, of this uh, health crisis is maybe it, it made us realize, realize this more. Thanks, San Sophie. Um, I'm going to turn the question to you, Martha, and then to you, Alex. Uh, we're going to have to be mindful of time, so these are going to have to be short and sweet. I apologize. Martha? Mm -hmm. No problem. So Nathan, yeah, I mentioned a couple of examples already, um, but I think yeah, building on, on what Anne Sophie was talking as well, the communities, and uh, we've been trialing a social innovation challenge where we've invited 140 people to take part in an internal hackathon to think about how can we help create more sustainable solutions to some vulnerable communities coming out of COVID but specifically related to our business areas of sanitation, health, hygiene um, and nutrition. 
and and I can follow up on that. So from from a genome perspective, I think one thing I was um, really happy to see is that as a business, we ha we had this recognition that the crisis represented a challenge to business overall, and that only the most resilient um, businesses will survive. And so B Corp represents that resilient sort of business model for us. Uh, and so we took the opportunity to accelerate our ambition on B Corp from, from 2030 down to 2025, giving us only five five more years. And at the same time, becoming an enterprise in Mission, as, as, uh, as Nathan mentioned earlier. So this real commitment to embedding purpose in, in the heart of the business, I think, I think was really positive. Um, on a more practical sense, we also um, immediately put set aside 300 million uh, euros to support our most vulnerable value chain partners. So that's small businesses that we work with, small suppliers, uh, also uh, some of our social programs in, in Brazil and China, um, waste picker programs uh, and, other, and other programs to support those, those social um, impacts that we have. Uh, and we, we recognize that, the, that those vulnerable partners really needed that extra support and we could provide it. Uh, so, so that was another thing I was, I was really happy to see from Dinone. Well, Alice, Martha, and Sophie, we'll go. Thank you very much for being part of this conversation. Uh, it's been really inspiring for me. I hope for all of those that have been dialing in or in the at the event in Parma, I hope this has also been an inspiring conversation for you. Uh, for me, it suggests that the uh, there's a huge opportunity for multinationals to embark on a journey of purpose uh, and to join us to uh, work toward the ambition of certifying as a B Corp and maybe considering something like the B Movement Builder program is an opportunity to really define that that journey and define that framework for becoming the business that you'd like to be in the future. So we have a, a decade to get there and look forward to working with all of you in the future. So thank you guys again. And thank you for Generation 2030.